Dungeons and Daddies is a rowdy, horny, violent podcast for grown-ups. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. Hey folks, Freddy here. Before we begin today, I want to tell you that we just launched our Patreon. So if you've enjoyed our premium dad antics and would like to contribute to help make this show happen, please head on over to patreon.com slash dungeons and dads. Thank you. It's hardcore history. How far would you go to save the life of your son? It's a question worth asking because in our modern, some would say, sheltered lives, we don't really ever have to face those kinds of life or death questions at all, now do we? The idea of stealing a magical weapon from a group of thieves calling themselves the Red Brands to free your son from a wizard's curse might be unthinkable to us. Yet that is exactly what four dads set out to do on a cold night in the forests outside Waterdeep. Now the plan was, and I'm pulling from a number of sources here, to take a page out of Germany's playbook during the Battle of Bolomov, where on the 31st of January 1915 they deployed poison gas on the battlefield. These dads would engage in their own form of chemical warfare by attempting to use their minivan to smoke out the Red Brand hideout with vape juice infused with drug flowers. Lest you think they would be affected themselves, well... They had a plan for that. One of the fathers, I believe I read somewhere it was Daryl Wilson, told the others that urine would stop the effects of the smoke, saying, quote, If you pee on a cloth, I was listening to hardcore history, and they peed on their faces. Now, those of you who are familiar with this program will know, I've never said anything about urine being an effective means to stop poison gas. Listening to Daryl would be a mistake. And that mistake would soon prove deadly. Welcome to Dungeons and Daddies, not a BDSM podcast. This is a D&D podcast about four dads flung into the Forgotten Realms in the quest to rescue their lost sons. My name is Freddie Wong, and I play Glenn Close, rock and roll dad. Uh, fun fact about Glenn this week, that despite espousing the rock star lifestyle to all the other dads and all the other strangers around him, Glenn Close has done a total of $15 of damage to a hotel, and that was when he... <laughs> And that was when <laughs> and that was when he stole a really nice looking wine like uncorker thing from a particularly nice hotel and decided to keep it. Was so, it a Hyatt? Oh man. Uh, no, it was like one of those nice fancy hotels somewhere on the California coast. Ooh. Fifteen um, bucks is pretty good for a wine uncorker. That's a they wanted to keep you know, <laughs> him on the accounts there. And the fun thing I like about this podcast and the character I play is how much of this is Freddie's real life and how much of this <laughs> is Glenn Close. You'll never know. <laughs> I'm Matthew Arnold, and I play Daryl Wilson, a stay-at-home coach dad uh, who's a barbarian. And a little fun fact about Daryl, his favorite holiday is uh, Tax Day. Um, oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. oh, man. Well, also, when Tax Day comes around, he already does taxes about three months ago. <laughs> yeah. Man after my own heart. Yeah. Matt's favorite day is October <laughs> when he remembers that he delayed his taxes and then has to do them again. Oh, oh my perfect. God. Hello, I am Will Campos. I play Henry Oak, uh, granola munching, Birkenstock wearing, crunchy granola hippie dad slash druid. Fun fact about Henry, I decided this on the way over. Henry dropped off his kids at his grandparents' house. Well, not his grandparents, at their grandparents' house one time when they were little boys. And uh, Henry's dad, Henry Sr., who's pretty hardcore, uh, spanked one of them. Oh, no. But won't tell Henry which one it was. Oh, my God. So <laughs> Henry, your, kid, your kids aren't narcs, so they won't. And then the kids aren't stitches, so he knows <laughs> one of them has been spanked exactly one time by their grandparent, and they don't. And he doesn't know which one it is. Is that like weird? Is that like, no. how do people feel about spanking now? <laughs> the speed at which Matt said no. <laughs> it's not weird for your I, character to have that as a moment. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah I mean, like, I'm, like, not, I'm not psyched about it as a person, but yeah. not, I don't feel like it's a bad thing to be in the podcast. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, cool. So you can't, it, by it, the way, you can't ask the opinion of spanking from the Asian in the, uh, in the <laughs> I podcast. Got, I got spanked as a kid. I got spanked. I yeah. wish I hadn't. It was I bullshit. Got, I got okay. spanked. Yeah, me too. So we anyway, all? that's why we're all doing this podcast. <laughs> Yeah, actually, oh yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, it turns out. Wait, Freddie, 
Is there some Asian stereotype about spanking? Oh, it's like, as from a cultural thing, it is like capital punishment and spanking are like the two knowns of Asian culture. Yep. As my mom is Thai, I can verify this is seconded. Like pro or against? Like, like pro. 100%. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like pro. 100% pro. Henry's a pretty like free range new age parent. So this definitely stressed him out a lot. Yeah. And he's definitely worried that like one kid is a little off kilter, but he doesn't know which one it is. Yeah. You were go- Henry was Googling like what is spanking's effect on children? Like is only one Long spanking enough to affect damage? Yeah. Yeah. Is there, are there any double blind studies on twins where one has been spanked <laughs> and the other hasn't <laughs> one time? Can you, you know? spank one and the other one feels it because of the twin connection? Oh my yeah. God. Wait, are they twins? Yeah, they're oh twins. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I forgot they were twins. Are you kidding me? I thought they were like a year apart. <laughs> no! Every NBC is like, oh, it's the same person. You even pay attention? You know. Oh <laughs> my god. So that was that, that was your parents, right? That was Henry's parents? Henry's parents. Okay, cool. Yeah. So did Henry get did spanked? They, yeah, they spanked Henry you? got spanked as a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh man. Oh shit. Another dad fact. Another I mean, it's not, a, a another, really sad dad fact. Another spanking related fact on this not a BDSM podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's not BDSM because they were these are not consensual spanks. That's so these true. are bad yeah. spanks. True yeah. dad. We're a sex positive non BDSM podcast. <laughs> so is ninety nine percent invisible too. <laughs> <laughs> And with that, my name is Beth May, and I play Ron Stampler, emotionally detached stepfather. Um, oh, he's also a rogue. Fun fact about Ron. <laughs> actually, it's three fun facts that are all linked by... Um, okay, so number one is that Ron thinks that all musicals have to be about animals. <laughs> okay, and then number two is that the only musical that Ron has ever seen is Cats. <laughs> Um, and then number three is that Ron's favorite musical is Cats. <laughs> How does he feel about musicals in general? Um, so far, so good. Like one right. for one. So he oh. likes Cats. Well, that's yeah. That's bearing the lead. That's a that's an important fact to know that he I, likes Cats. I mean, cats. yeah. Favorite favorite musical, probably favorite thing. So when <laughs> so when Ron hears someone describe like another musical, like Hamilton, is he just like, oh, they must be all like dogs or something or like, like that? Like pigs, like ham. I, th- I think he thinks that Hamilton is about ham. Oh my Fun God. fact, I also think Hamilton is about ham. I don't know how Ron lived this long just like in life, just like in society. It feels like he should have been culled long ago by natural selection. Don't count down luck, baby. <laughs> So my dad fact this week, and this is just spurred from Freddie talking about his character stealing $15 worth of stuff from a hotel room. So when I was 19, I uh, was invited to an EA promotional event for like the expansion pack for Command and Conquer 3. And they hosted hosted us at the Ritz Carlton. And I'm from Phoenix, Arizona, which is the opposite of the Ritz Carlton. (laughs) And so when Arizona? I was so when I was there, so I'm also from Arizona. I thought it would be fun to steal one of the bathrobes, and I was like, "They'll never know." Oh no! And then I stole the bathrobe, and I never heard anything else about it. And I was like, "Ha ha!" And then I looked up how much the cost for stealing one of them was, and it was like eighteen hundred dollars, which meant that the very nice EA guy who had been hosting all of the <gasps> community people had to pay out of EA's budget eighteen hundred dollars. Oh no! And I got a new job, and the head of marketing <gasps> there is the guy that I made pay $1,800. <gasps> what a twist! Oh, twist. And every oh day, do, 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 every, do, do, every do, day do, do. I see him, I pray he does not recognize me as the 19-year-old kid who, who fleeced Holy him for $1,800. I think we can all agree the real people him. who were fleecing you were the people who said a replacement towel is $1,800. Oh, no, it was a bathrobe. It was a terry cloth bathrobe. Oh, I still feel like God. that's a bit high uh, Yeah, yeah, it's bullshit. It's the Ritz Carlton. That $1,800 is why Battlefront 2 had my <laughs> if you want to clean your conscience, download Battlefront and, and buy <laughs> and buy eighteen hundred dollars eighteen hundred dollars worth of loot boxes. <laughs> you lost me in pronouncing it like Battlefront, like it's two <laughs> words. Battlefront two, <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> All right, do you guys want to pretend to be wizards and shit? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go. Let's dive in. Matt fucked up his roll, crit failed, hit himself in the face with his pommel of his uh, axe, and then also very quickly learned that urine does not eliminate <laughs> the psychotropic effects of the drugs in this world. The hardest lesson to learn, really. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey Daryl, 
Sounds like oh boy, oh, you're God. in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you all know. I don't even need to tell you what to do. You all know what to do. In character Daryl Wilson uh, would obviously not respond with any sort of joke. <laughs> I am currently vomiting, and I forgot everything, which is why I forgot that there were twins. <laughs> wink, wink. I was in character in this at the beginning. I'm just going to point out that for the first time, you are in a position where you could redirect that damage to a hostile enemy. I know, but I play by the rules, and I'm throwing up, so I'm not making a okay. joke. Is there a separate rule for like? In character dad jokes versus like dad jokes that I just make because I'm sad <laughs> and I want attention. As we've just found from, I think, the intro of this, there is so little difference between our characters and us <laughs> that I'm just going to treat them as one of the enough. same. All right, guys, pony up. Yeah, everybody roll a d4 of damage or come up with your own dad joke so you can redirect it to somebody else. God, sounds like our prospects here are really in the toilet. Boom! That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Thank you for calling it good. That was good. <laughs> that was a good joke, Beth. We should have pee on these peons. All right. All right. Uh, all right. Well, you know, I'll allow right. it. I don't I know guess. what I'm allowing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to redirect this to one of the guards. Uh, so I'm assuming all of you are redirecting to the guards? Yes. Except okay, for so me, Matt, which Matt, I just yeah. took three damage. As I'm floating, if I'm vomiting, is it kind of like a Wally type in space moment where I'm like, <laughs> where it's like projecting you backwards? Yeah, like is that the gravity works here? Am I moving around? Peter Gabriel's lightly yes. wafting in the oh background. <laughs> the force of your dad jokes becomes physicalized, and you see this force just move through the air and poof, hit the ruffian that just rang the alarm in the face, and he takes four damage. <laughs> Sweet. So now you are properly in combat, so everybody roll initiative. Not to do your job for you, I feel like I probably have a disadvantage for initiative, right? Um, <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a good idea. I like that. 14. 12. 18. That's a seven for me. My initiative can vote. <laughs> and buy watch cigarettes. Pornography. <laughs> legally or whatever. <laughs> legally. Because that's always stopped kids in the past. <laughs> Your initiative is of age. <laughs> is of age. <laughs> Okay, so my, my initiative cannot have sex with your initiatives. <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be a few people under 18 who are like, wait, is it illegal for me to watch porn right now? <laughs> a good third of our listener base just started sweating. And to all of those who are in that base, the police are on their way. <laughs> <laughs> they know what you did. They, they saw you scroll down to 1901 for your birthday because you thought it was so funny. <laughs> and your parents do know, by the way. Yeah. yeah. You open all those tabs. You don't need your to open parents all those tabs. Know, and so do we. You know what I just realized? I don't even. Th are those age gate things even a thing anymore? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, still yeah. like a legal requirement for just, them to have an age they, gate. All thing. the websites know I'm old now. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, welcome back. <laughs> They're like, aren't you married? And you're like, shut up. <laughs> First off, it will be Henry's turn. It's Henry's turn. So what do I see? I'm like around the corner. Where am I? So yeah, you're around the corner and you can see poor Daryl doing all Yarting. kinds of horrible things. I'm spin wheeling in midair. You can see Glenn just whiffed on the other guy. Guard, and the guard that Glenn whiffed on blew into a whistle and was shouting alarm, alarm. You hear some like footsteps inside of the uh, warehouse. Or do we? Are they floating? Oh yeah, what happened with our with our weed magic? I don't know. Maybe you'll find out when you open the door. Oh. Okay, so there's two guards in front of me, though. Correct. That, okay, and we don't because the van's in the back because Lizard Scales McStuffins yes. is uh, flooding the engine to smoke everyone out, Correct. right? Okay, Ron's next to me, right? Yep. I'm going to consult with Ron. <laughs> Sounds Ron, like a good plan. Ron, what do you think we should do? We're in a real gym jam here. It looks like our boys ambush didn't go so well. That's true, Henry. Um, if I were in this situation, which I am, <laughs> I would, um, I don't know. What were you thinking? <laughs> Henry decides to redirect his energy towards <laughs> the battle. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take one of them. You take the other one, okay? Which one? Which one is which? Uh, you take the one on the left, and I'll take the one on the right. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, I'm going to, let's see, am I going to use a little, a little razzle-dazzle on these guys? <laughs> I got so many options. I'm just going to run up screaming with my light hammer. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to hit one of them on the head. <laughs> Sounds perfect. This is real Dungeons and Dragons, everybody. <laughs> finally, 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 we're playing. Finally, one melee attack without any dumb fucking yep, dad it's jokes. About in fucking it. time. That's what we've been waiting for. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do it. Hot dice coming <laughs> All in. All right, here we go. And I even got a boring roll on it in eleven. <laughs> God, I love this game. Gosh, what a rush! <laughs> Tip of the bell curve. <laughs> Minus one to hit, so a ten. Wait, what? I think because I'm bad because I have minus one strength. Uh, so, yeah, you come up with your light hammer and 
completely unused to the idea of even attacking another human being with a weapon. You kind of just like swing just generally in his space and you just like, you're like a foot away from him just in front. He just sees it go right past his face and nothing. And I say sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now it is Glenn Close's turn. Uh, am I affected by the um, aforementioned? No, because you were not hurt. You didn't have to like <gasps> to breathe back in. So you can tell what's going on now. You're going to have to like avoid the smoke or whatever. Yeah. I mean, you'll have to avoid the smoke, but I'm not going to make you roll to like avoid it because it's like you could just choose to hold your breath and like whatever. Sure, sure. And who's who's the closest to me? There is a red brand ruffian right next to you with a it's blowing on a whistle saying alarm, alarm. Can he see me as I flourish with my nunchucks? <laughs> yes, he can see you. <laughs> so then you'll see the six flourish as it whips from my left to six? my right. Okay. And then he sees again. As I <laughs> no. All right. You nut yourself. <laughs> Again, <laughs> take damage. That would be 1d6 of nut damage. Oh, my God. And uh, oof, three damage. We'll never oh be a father God. again. So this guy <laughs> looks to his left and sees like, uh, 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 I'm vomiting, like floating. And he turns his right and sees you hit yourself in the nuts. And you also take a suck in and you start fucking <laughs> vomiting and start floating. And, and like, then Henry just swung with a hammer and missed. <laughs> yeah. Ron, it's up to you. Ron, you <laughs> okay. Okay. Game Ron. okay. Okay. I take... Both components of my disassembled, pre-assembled skip it, and I throw them individually at the same time at both guards. Holy oh, shit. shit. What a move. Double ninja star action. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, Beth May, am describing Ron's action. I am moving my hands forward as if throwing with both of my hands at the same time, and it looks hella cool. Hey, I'll tell you right now, it looks... Maybe like the least powerful thing anyone's ever done <laughs> in history. <laughs> it's like somebody like directing air traffic control after their wrist got broken. But like, <laughs> but in the coolest way possible. Okay. So if you want to do that, you can do that. You're just going to roll an attack against both guys, but you'll have disadvantage on both of them. Okay. So this is the first dude. 16. Roll again. You're going to take whatever this less, lesser. 15. Ooh. <laughs> so you're going to do 1d6 plus 2 because we're basically pretending that your shimitar, according to the character sheet, is a skip it. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so roll damage on the first guy. Holy eight. shit. Whoa. Oh, six dang. plus 2, 8. Wow, okay. So here's what happens. The first guy, so which part of the skip it did you throw at this guy? I'm gonna the skip say, or the ball? I'm going to say the ball. Okay. Like a shot put. Yeah. Was it just a, it was just a mace, right? It was like a morning star? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> this guy turns, sees vomiting to his right, and then sees vomiting to his left. It goes, what? And as he's about to say, what? Your ball comes in and just impacts into his face and just crushes his skull. Oh, oh my God. And he is fucking dead. <laughs> so the oh last thing he God. sees <laughs> is a grown man floating in the air vomiting, another man nutting himself. And then air traffic control. <laughs> 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 and before all that, he got hit by the dad joke. So it was like the most confusing and last <laughs> seconds of his entire life. Dang. That's how I want to go. Okay, so that dude's just fucking dead. Now okay. you can roll for the second dude. Six. All right, and the second one, the skip part of the skip, it just whooshes past and he is unharmed. So that guy, he turns to look at you, one of the two only non-completely incompetent people <laughs> in this fight, and is going to come up to you and attack you with his short sword. So he hits you with both of his attacks and you take 10 damage. Poor Ron. And then as his uh, short sword cuts a chunk out of your shoulder, the door behind him busts open and you see three more red band ruffians coming out, waving their hands in front of them, trying to dissipate the smoke. They have a little bit of vomit on their chest, <laughs> <laughs> but it seems like they didn't get much of it. And behind them, you can see that the bat moved around a little bit, but he didn't have enough time to fully fill the space. And there's definitely one room in the back that you can see smoke coming through a crack in a door that seems like it's definitely smoked out. But in this large antechamber that makes up the majority of the warehouse, it feels like it didn't have time to fully get smoked out. So you're going to have to deal with these three as well. So now you, there are four Red Band Ruffians remaining. And with that, it is now Daryl Wilson's turn. Daryl Wilson floating, uh, unsure of where he is, vomiting, sees three gentlemen come out through a door, and Daryl Wilson puts his arm out and says... Hi, <laughs> my name's Daryl Wilson. <laughs> All right, uh, go ahead and roll persuasion because you're persuading them to be nice. That is an 11. The three dudes stop in confusion and one of them sort of slowly reaches out his hand as well. <laughs> does he grab my hand? Uh, yeah, he does. 
I go, uh, sorry for uh, vomiting on your doorstep there, sir. I, I gotta be honest, I don't quite know where. Uh, am I floating? You, you are, yeah, uh-huh. And then as he's saying that, he turns and he sees the dead, <laughs> skull-fractured, impacted uh, uh, red brand next to him. And he goes, oh! And the guard that uh, is next to Freddy goes like, they're, atta- they're attacking! No, we have to do, they're, they're attacking! And they go, oh, okay. I follow his gaze when he looks down, and I see this collapsed skull. And I go, what the? And I vomit <laughs> all over them. Okay. Roll constitution. <laughs> <laughs> you want to fail this. Yes, yes. Eight. Perfect. Okay, so you roll. Oh, sorry, plus two. This ten. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Oh, okay. I'm joking. So yeah, you vomit all over all three of them. <laughs> and so for the next round, while they're dealing with that, people will have advantage for attacks to hit against them. You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> Quick question. How long is combat, and do I actually forget for five minutes? You forget whatever happened in the last five minutes. So, oh, okay. so you remember everything about the plan and everything, just okay. whatever happened in the so last minutes. So I feel like I'm recovering. It was a moment of, of complete, I wasn't sure what's going on, but okay. Yeah, I'm but coming, you, I'm coming you're back. basically back to normal okay, next okay. round. That's fine. Okay, so now it is Henry's turn again. Henry is going to uh, have a weird moment. Oh man! As he nice. feels really weird about what just happened with his hammer, and then he he senses like an anger inside him, a power inside him, and he turns into a bear. Ooh, yes! So I was just well, you can I, turn into bears too. I can turn into any animal I've seen before. And he saw oh a grizzly bear once at the San Diego That's Zoo. The San Diego <laughs> Zoo is the entire basis of your power. That two hundred dollar day trip <laughs> forms the foundation of all of your magical powers. Will's not going to turn into a wolf because I told him if he turns into a wolf, I'm going to try to ride him. <laughs> You'll get your chance, Matt. Don't you worry. <laughs> so I'm just, just going to say Daryl riding a bear is also maybe the best thing. Yeah, I know, yeah. but that's yeah, true. Both of them is hot as hell. I just want to say. So I bear out. Um, <laughs> Sounds good. Bear with me. It's a story break crossover as Henry says, bear with me and turns into a bear. I don't know what a bear's shit is. Can we look this up? Sorry. No, it's I fine. feel like I'm grinding us to a halt here. No, no, no. Brown bear, fifth edition. Man, they really nerfed the bears ever since fourth. <laughs> <laughs> so you can bite, which is a plus five to hit with one D8 plus four piercing damage. Whoa. Ooh. Or you could try to claw, which is plus five to hit and it's two D6 plus four piercing damage. Why would you ever bite? I'm going to claw. All right. All right. I'm feeling like a oh bear. Oh, my God. You make multi-attacks. You, oh, shit. You do one with For the, real? You do a bite and a claw. This is way too powerful. This seems <laughs> extremely imbalanced. <laughs> All right. Can you like, do that like once a day, probably? I can do it twice per short rest. What? I can what? stay as a bear for an hour. I'll look that up after the session. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm getting away with it now. So what, I just roll a d20? You're going to roll a d20. All right. First, tell me, are you trying to attack the guys that got vomited on or the guy who is not vomited the on? The guy I just missed with the hammer. Okay. So the guy who's not vomited on. Yes. All right. I got an 11 plus five, right, to hit. Okay. So that hits him with the bite. And now go ahead and roll damage for the bite. So that'll be a d8 plus four. Uh, which one of these fuckers is a d8? It's like two pyramids ass to ass. <laughs> uh, I got a four. Okay, so that's eight damage from that. Now hit him with the claws. Okay, and now he gets the claws. I uh, get, did not so great on the claw. I got a 13, including the bonus. Uh, yeah, it just barely just whiffs past okay. him. Okay, You hit him for eight damage, so he's looking bloodied. Sweet. Now it is Glenn Close's turn. So we got three guys with disadvantage. We got one guy that's getting currently mauled by a bear that came out of nowhere. Very similar to one from the San Diego Zoo. Mm-hmm. I want to say specifically it's a panda, if I can. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh that's adorable. That's great. That's great. That's really good. Yeah. To be fair, panda stats are slightly less lazier. <laughs> lazier. <laughs> yeah. Like you can't fuck and you're not as bad. Yeah. Yeah. You that's have horrible, true. you have horrible seduction roles. Yeah, all um, your seduction rolls don't work, and you have to eat way more plants. Where does this come from? What, what, are pandas not sexy? Yeah, pandas, yeah are, they don't have pandas sex. Pandas will not have sex with each other. They're like the only creature that's trying to become extinct. They kind of just figured out that life is better if you just sit around eating bamboo rather than <laughs> yeah. trying to get And then the best part about that bamboo game. is that it provides so little nutrition to them that they have to eat ungodly amounts Dude, of no, it. Dude, no, for oh real, I went to the San Diego Zoo last year, and we saw this new like baby boy panda, oh, and yeah. he was like 14-year-old Will. It was just this panda split. Laid out in a tree, just double fisting bamboo. <laughs> just try- all he needed was an Xbox controller, <laughs> and it was like it was just like it was like a Seth Rogen movie or something. It was hilarious. The fourteen-year-old Will had a lot of sex though. Right? <laughs> I plead the fifth. It's like 20-year-old Bev on her couch eating Laffy Taffy's for much. like yeah, six yeah, months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dream, essentially. Yeah, if, yes. they, if they go extinct, they go out doing what we all wish we had the courage to do. <laughs> Which is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> 
So I'm woozy and floating, but I did see Ron get chunked by that short sword. So I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on Ron, which I assume is, is within touch range, right? Yep. Cure Wounds touches uh, hit points equal to 1d8 plus my spellcasting ability modifier. So that's 2d8 plus 3. I feel like as a bard rock dad, this is like a restorative high five, right? Yeah, it's a fist pound. Yeah. It's a, hey, hey, you're looking a little tired there. Get your head in the game. Let's do this. Let's finish this show. And I hold my fist out for a fist bump. Um, I put my hand around it. And well, that, I can get out. <laughs> and that heals you for 11. Wow. You got all your HP back. Oh, man. I feel rejuvenated. I mean, I feel rejuvenated. <laughs> This heal went up to 11. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And on that note, it is now Ron Stampler's turn. Let's see. Can I do something to... I, I was thinking about doing something with my pants, as I often do. Um, <laughs> but I would like to distract the guards, the remaining guards, using my transmutation cantrip. Okay. Describe it. Okay, so... <laughs> is Ron just going to run screaming into the woods? No, no, it's not. Oh, it's what not. is it? Okay, so how do you pronounce this? Thum thaumaturgy? Yeah. Th thaumaturgy? Which is create an instantaneous sound that originates from a point of your choice within range, such as a rumble of thunder or ominous whispers. So Ron's version of this is called Daddy's Home. Oh, and, my God. And it's the, the enemy briefly hears the frightening voice of Ron's father from around them. Whoa. Okay. So what I'll say is that you can try to do that, but because they're already in combat and they saw somebody die, you are definitely more their immediate concern than the sound of your dad, potentially. <laughs> you would think. <laughs> so you can roll intimidation, but you'll be at disadvantage. Okay. Big rolls. Let's do it. Big daddy rolls. Big daddy rolls. <sighs> That's a nine. <laughs> Why don't you roll again? Because it might be worse even. Oh, yikes. Okay. 14. All right. So yeah. What does your dad say? I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. They, they hear that and they look at you because it seems to have affected you far more than it affected them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crying from the wound. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and they just kind of shrug it off and continue to attack. So there are still four of these dudes. The three guys, the baddies, are going to spend their actions shaking the vomit from their eyes so that you no longer have advantage against them, but they did have to waste all turn getting the vomit off of them. And the fourth one is going to attack the bear. How much HP does this bear have? I'm going to check that very shortly. All right, so hits you with its short sword for three damage, and then it hits you with its short sword. And does it hit? Does it hit? Does it hit, Daddy? Daddy, tell me. <laughs> it does. So it hits you all together for... This is a joke. What? You have 34 hit points as a yes. bear. He hits you for six damage and it means nothing to you, apparently. Hey, so for six damage? Yeah. All right, so that'll knock me down to 28, which is two above my normal full health. Good lord. From now on, I'm role-playing a bear who turns into a druid every now and then, every <laughs> night out again. <laughs> I do like the idea that you can just pick any animal from the San Diego Zoo. I know, There's yeah. so many at the zoo. It's it a great zoo. It could be a giraffe, zoo. a rhinoceros. An armadillo. There we go, an armadillo. Wow. All right, well, I, I take the hit. Yep. And I say, hey, boo-boo. <laughs> 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 All right, Daryl Wilson, sir. Okay, so I'm, I'm... I will bet you $20 Matt is about to try to jump on me. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> so there's three armed people right in front of me. Uh-huh. I, I forgot the last five minutes, so I, I look over at... I'm like, Glenn, what the hell's happened? Oh, uh, hey, man. Uh, I think we're in a fight. What are we supposed to do an ambush? I don't know, man. This stuff's hit me pretty hard. <laughs> what? I shake off and I look and I see three armed men in front of me and I evoke rage. Okay. And now when I evoke rage, I have ancestral protectors, which I didn't read until recently. <laughs> I thought it was a cool name. I thought all it did was make sure that if they don't attack me, they get disadvantage on anybody else they try to attack. Okay. But the important thing is, is that the reason that happens is because from my body, comes the spectral spirits of all of Daryl Wilson's favorite fathers. Whoa! <laughs> Wait, how many what? fathers do you have? So, my own father steps out and begins circling the men and they, he reaches out his hand and he goes, hi, nice to meet you. And he starts <laughs> shaking their hands. Abraham Lincoln steps out. <laughs> George Washington steps out. <laughs> and Mike Brady from the Brady Bunch steps out. Oh my God. 
Daryl Wilson's favorite show. It's either that or gonna be tool time. <laughs> favorite <laughs> show steps out and begins circling them and just imbuing them with dad knowledge. Just to be like, hey, you know, you guys shouldn't be fighting. Hey, hey, and they're just talking. Okay. As as a man who studied the presidents, can you give me a little bit of like what is Washington saying and what is Lincoln saying? Uh <laughs> sure glad I have all these slaves. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh man. <laughs> And Abraham Lincoln would be like, oh, you're not going to keep those for much longer. (laughs) (laughs) So I evoke rage and then I swing at the one in the middle of those three. Okay, so you can evoke rage as a as like a bonus action as a bonus action. I evoke rage and it lasts for one minute. Go ahead and swing. (laughs) That's a three. (laughs) So I miss all of your favorite dads are very disappointed (laughs) in you. All of them stop and they just turn to look at you and they just kind of silently (laughs) shake their heads. I stare at my dad and. I go, I miss you. <laughs> oh, man. oh, my God. I put my head down. <laughs> oh, my God. How did Daryl's dad die? Did he, did he die or did he just leave? We'll, we'll get to there at some point. All right. He's dead, though. Okay. That's why he's a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't leave and become a ghost. <laughs> I kind of just imagine that these were the spirits of the way that you view them rather than, like, literally their oh, spirits. No. So you're related to George Washington and Abraham Lincoln? If you're an American, you were all related to <laughs> We're all related to the founding fathers, Freddie. Ron, 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 Ron hears that. Ron hears that excuse, and then he perks up. Oh, all right. My wow. God. All right. Oh, shit. We are back to Henry Oak's turn. Henry Oak, in bear form, rears in astonishment at <laughs> the appearance of four ghost dads and then lets out a patriotic growl at the sight of Abraham Lincoln. He's so pumped up. He's going to hit this guy again with his big bear claws. Sounds good. Can you swing those two attacks on two different people? Uh, yeah. Oh, maybe I'll do that then. Maybe I'll bite one and hit the other with my with my claws. Yeah, I mean, I think you can bite one and then see if it kills him and then choose to hit another guy or Let's whatever. Let's do that. Let's start with that bite. Shasha. Got an eight plus uh, five. five, so 13. Not quite enough. Just barely your teeth. Just, Ooh, just I, right out of right I out bit of my it. bear tongue. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm mad and I rolled a nine uh, plus five, 14. That hits. Wow. Bingo. Uh, 2d6 plus three. Oh, shit. Plus four, actually. Oh I just looked God. up. Yeah. So that's, I rolled nine plus four is 13 damage. Okay, so you just bisect him. He, there was one of him and now there's just two parts of him. And he just dies very quick. So quickly, he doesn't even know what happened. The bear part of Henry is very stoked, but the human part of Henry, who's in control, is very horrified at what just happened. So it is Glenn Close's turn again. So we got one who's been bisected. Yeah, you only have three living ones remaining. They were the ones that had been vomited on that are now standing in front of Floaty Daryl. So the substance use has put me in a somewhat social mood. So I'm going to cast a first level spell, a Charm Person. Okay. I'm going to attempt to charm one of those three post-vomit. I kind of tap him on the shoulder. I'm like, hey, man, pretty sweet robes you got going on there. I dig it. I think that the, uh, I think that really kind of complements the whole like outfit you guys got going. I like, I like your guys' whole style, your whole steez. All right. This person must attempt to do a wisdom saving throw with advantage. With advantage? And, oh, because uh, we're in combat. You're in combat, and there's a wisdom of saving throw of 13. Okay. So that's... He fails. Ooh. All right, so what happens when what he happens fails? What happens now is that it is charmed by you until the spell ends or until you or your companions do anything harmful to it. The charm creature regards you as a friendly acquaintance. When the spell ends, the creature knows it was charmed by you. So you say all those nice things to him, and he, like, pauses for a second and then kind of cocks his head, and he goes, Hey! <laughs> he goes in for, like, a hug. He's like, it's my old pal. I recognize you. Hey! Hey! We totally fumbled a handshake, but it's fine because we're buds. <laughs> yeah, you got like he goes for a handshake and you go for like a hug and then like you do the like that, what do we do? But it's charming and endearing. And we're like, this is the exact weird dance we used to do. It's our whole thing. Messing up handshakes. What you doing here, man? <laughs> man, this is romantic as hell. <laughs> we're just uh, looking for this. Uh, I heard you guys got this sick axe in there, dude. So uh, as you say that, the other two are like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? That'll be your turn. So he's on your side now. So when it comes time for the bandit's turn, he will do whatever you want him to do. Mm -hmm. Now it is Ron's turn. Okay. Um, Ron sees the chain part of the skip it in the distance. And he's going to try just empowered by 
honestly, the rage of uh, his father's voice and um, all those other fathers just being disappointed at another father. There's just a lot of fatherly sorrow that's fueling his anger oh right now. And so he's just going to try to, you know, like, he missed that one throw, but he's going to go find that chain. Gosh darn it. Okay. And then he's going to try to strangle somebody with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll just say you just get the chain, no problem, because I would usually have you do an opportunity attack, but the person you would do that for will just bisect it. So you just get the chain. Let's say, uh, are you going to try to chuck them from the front or from behind? From behind. Okay, so then roll uh, stealth to see if you can get behind them without them noticing. Five plus four, that's nine. Okay. They rolled a crit fail. Oh. <laughs> the suspense. So you easily come up behind them because they're so busy being irritated that one of their friends is all of a sudden like buddy buddy with <laughs> the floating vomiting guy. <laughs> with one of the two floating vomiting guys. So go ahead and roll a roll and attack on them. Eight. Okay, so you get the chain over his head, but as you're about to pull it tight, he sees what you're doing and then puts a hand up to like grab the inside of the chain. And so now you two are sort of struggling together and he's like got his hand on your weapon. So he's going to have to deal with that as his action. So it's now the baddie's turn. So his action is going to be, he's going to try to do a strength check to like sort of duck under the chain. Uh, why don't you roll strength? Um, 10 plus one. Ooh, okay. So he uh, doesn't make it. You pull it tighter and, and you, you've just got him restrained now. Okay. The second guy Freddy, you get to determine what he does. Your friend. I feel like I feel like because so I have some that allows me to have these guys attack. Like so, I have a second level one that's called Crown of Madness, which is like oh, a okay. So, this one is just so your I think friend. this is like this is like my good college buddy. So if someone attacks me, I feel like he would be like, "Hey, what the heck? This is my buddy Glenn. Sure, like, sure, what sure. the hell? Like, he would be." Can I throw an idea? Yeah, let's hear it. I have an idea. I was thinking about this earlier. Is this the guy with the whistle? Like the the alarm whistle? No, that was no, the no, guy no, you like, killed. The guy with the alarm whistle is covered in blood in oh, two sections. Could we could we like blow that whistle again? It's like a hey, false alarm whistle Ooh. like in thief like when the guards are alerted and then you hide for a second and then they're like i guess nothing happened must have been rats my, back to my normal life like can we can we okay, do like so a i'm going to try I, I like that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and pull him over to the side so he doesn't <laughs> see like what is clearly about to happen like i feel like we've been having a conversation like catching up on old college times and i'm gonna like kind of put my arm around him and kind of like lead him over well he's gonna lead me because i'm floating but like kind of turn him away <laughs> he's from, carrying you like a balloon like a little child's <laughs> balloon on a I mean, there's just so much we have to catch up on. We were such good buddies back in college. college. Sure. Back bard in- college? Is this bard college? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are you saying to him, Freddie? Yeah, we took we, yeah, we took the pickup artist course together. Hey, how's the game going? Um, <laughs> but the point being is that so he doesn't see what's the chaos that is currently happening. Sure. And the persuasion here is I'm going to be like, dude, it's been like a wild night. Like these two guys, they got in a fight. Like you see this? This guy bashed the other guy's head in. Like it sounds like you guys got a little descent in the ranks here. I feel like. I mean, you heard the whistle, but I think that's a kind of false alarm. I think we should, you know, maybe, you know. Okay, roll deception with advantage because he is charmed. 15. 15. Okay, that succeeds. And he goes like, oh, man, you're right. This is just like that one frat party that, you guys have frats here? This is like that one party (laughs) that you guys had. Remember? We have frats there, extremely deadly. Yeah, like those deadly frats. Like, remember? They come from the ground underneath. (laughs) (laughs) Many tentacles and many eyes. The frats are creatures of great fear. Just wait until you hear about the sororities. We talked about that that all the time in college. Yeah, the sororities are actually pretty nice. (laughs) (laughs) They get a bad rap because people tend to be really anti women for kind of no reason, but like, they're generally fine. No, like, as a women's sororities are the worst. Are they really? Yeah, they're (laughs) horrific. (laughs) I don't know that. Okay, so yeah, he goes, yeah, good point. I feel like these guys might get even more upset if the alarm keeps going, so let me let me just take a quick... <laughs> and he takes out his whistle and does the exact noise that I just made. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, he does, like, he, he takes out the whistle, but he just makes the noise. Yeah, he does it into the whistle, <laughs> and it, like, barely goes through and comes out a little bit more high-pitched. And the third guy, who still saw, like, the second guy get strangled... And he still has his action left. He goes, dude, what the fuck are you doing? And he moves to take out his whistle. And (laughs) then he thinks, no, actually, I should probably deal with the guy that's choking my friend out first. So he turns and tries to attack Ron. And he crit fails. What? (laughs) No! Now the tables have turned, daddy master. So he's, in his attempt to attack Ron, he accidentally attacks the guy that Ron is strangling. (laughs) And he does... 
three damage to him. So he takes his short sword out and tries to hit Ron in the face, but just misses and cuts off the guy's ear. Um, <laughs> he goes, oh, oh, my bad, my bad. I'll try again. I'll try again. It'll be different this time, I promise. <laughs> oh, why are you kidding me? The chances of that are literally one in 400. Did you crit fail again? I did. Oh, oh no. My goodness. He goes, it will be different this time. <laughs> and then it's not different this time. But again, for three damage, and he cuts off his other ear, and he goes, oh! <laughs> It was it was different in a different way, I guess. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Okay, that many crit fails in a row. That's pretty that's, like, eerie. Because I, I like. Oh my god! All right, yeah. everybody, roll a d4 or add on top of it. Ron is like, "What's that? You're attacking me? I can't hear you." <laughs> okay. 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 Daryl Wilson takes four damage. <laughs> He's going to use stones endurance to, <laughs> to protect himself from this dad joke that he just heard. I feel like those are the two words that Daryl furiously thinks when he's getting soft during sex. <laughs> stones endurance. Come on, Carol. You know your man's got stones endurance. Six. I stopped all that damage. <laughs> it's like Daryl's equivalent of Bed Bath and Beyond. Stones endurance. Stones endurance. Freddie's going to his mind palace right now. <laughs> he, I feel like you got He's, he's like, like doing stuff with his hands like Sherlock to like push shit out of the way. I feel like you got to just be able to do it. Otherwise, I know, you take I know, it. I know, I know, I oh, know. Oh, it's a tough one. It's like, can um, I do one for Freddy and just to show off? Yeah. I mean, it won't help him. You'll just be showing off and shaming you, him. You cut off his ears. Talk about a lobe blow. I Holy had a lobe shit. one that I was working on. Shit. Yep. All right. So that's 2d4. Yeah, you got to take a d4. Um, so which guard Oof, are you going to attack? Another three damage. Oof. Are you going to attack with those d4s of yours? The uh, guy who lost his ear or the guy who took the ears. The guy who lost his ears didn't hear these. <laughs> that's true. true. Oh, that's a really good point. Okay, so the guy who took the, who took the dude's ears off takes 2d4 of damage. Okay, so he takes 4 damage, which is nothing to sneeze at. Also also your friend like your baddie friend who got charmed was like, "Oh my god, you are joking. These guys are there's all kinds of descent there. They're, they're fucking butchering each other. Oh my god." Yeah, man. That feels sounds like you guys got a little discipline problem going on here. Clearly. Is that what's going on? Oh no. Uh, it is once again Daryl's turn. <laughs> I mean, I'm. I guess Daryl Wilson just swings an axe at he does Dungeon <laughs> Dragon stuff. <laughs> you had a pretty good turn last turn when yeah. four presidents came out of your body. Like, are like the presidents he's... still there? Have they dissipated into the? Yeah, mists? they're kind of like they kind of hover around. In a way, they're always there. Yeah, yeah, true. they're kind <laughs> of just like circling around, kind of vaguely saying dad stuff, and you know the fact that. Daryl fucked up so hard last time. I mean, he's just trying to swing, so. Ah, damn it. I can feel it coming in the ear tonight. <laughs> oh, oh, that's that terrible. Oh, it's, too no. late. it's too late for it. It's too late for it, but I just, oh, I, it came to me. Daryl Wilson, despite chanting Stone's Endurance <laughs> again and again, rolled a four. So yeah. it's a nine. Oh, okay. It almost does something, but not quite. So yeah, you swing with your, what are you swinging with? It's my uh, golf club. Oh yeah. So you swing with your golf club and uh, a bogey. You got a bogey. <laughs> <laughs> As I do it, I, I, I can literally see Abraham Lincoln <laughs> shaking his head at me. <laughs> a notoriously gray golfer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's now Henry Oak's turn again for what is almost certainly going to be the last round of combat. Okay. So what do we got? We got a guy with no ears. He's yeah. getting choked out by a chain. Yeah, and then the third guy is Freddy's friend. Henry Oak is going to de-bear. Okay. And then he's going to look at the guy who just cut the friend's ears off. I'm just be like, take the L, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, roll, uh, uh, let's say, intimidation. Okay. That's say like persuasion. That's, persuasion. That's pretty okay. friendly. I got a 14 plus one is 15. He goes, uh... Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> and he sheathes his sword and he's like, I'm just, I'm out. I'm gone. I can't go back in there. They know, he knows I did that. I'm not going to kill my friend. So he just walks into the fucking forest and out of this story forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you are now out of combat. The guy with no ears just drops his sword and is like, I, ha, I stop. stop. I'm sorry. Whatever it was, go. What do you want? What do you want? Oh my Darryl God. Wilson, nice to meet you. Daryl Wilson. What? <laughs> what? Daryl Wilson, nice to meet you. He reaches out and grabs your hand. I shake it. I, I bring my guy back over. Uh -huh. I'm like, <laughs> and luckily now his friend can't hear all the lies that I'm pouring into his <laughs> ear because he's basically deafened by. And I go, hey guys, this is a, uh, and I do that thing where I introduce other people first <laughs> so that he'll say his Very name. Good. Like, Very this good. is uh, Daryl. Hello, nice to meet you. 
Oh, he, he shakes your hand and goes, hi, hi, I'm, I'm Harrelson. Harrelson? Yeah. Yeah, Harry. It's me, your good pal Harrelson. Oh, yeah. yeah. Harrelson. Good old Harry. Cool. Hey, Harrelson. <laughs> I'm going to turn back away and kind of look at their hideout. So is there, you guys are like hanging on to like an axe or something in there? Ooh, did you come to see the axe? Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It's in the, um, <laughs> ooh. It's in that room with all the uh, smoke coming out of it. That's... Hmm. I don't know what that's about. Hold on one second, Harry. Let me just uh, consult with my buds here. These guys are cool. Don't worry about it. I'm going to do a quick dad huddle. Dad huddle? Dad huddle. Can we just ask him to get the axe for us? Yeah, I think that's the way to do it. It's a pretty good idea. He's, but, a, he's my bud. But here's the thing. If he does go into that room, he'll start floating and barfing and forget what just happened in the last five minutes. So oh, he'll could, probably forget put, that he's there for the axe. We could write on his uh, on his hand, hey, I'm here to get the axe. <laughs> so that when he's uh, barfing and... um. Floating. It's, it's like, like that movie. Remember me. Spike it. <laughs> <laughs> he could uh he could hold his hey Harrelson, how long can you hold your breath? <laughs> That's a very specific I don't know. Well, I mean you could hold your breath, run into a room holding his breath, grab the axe and get out. How big's the room? <laughs> Wait, what do you what do you want me to do? I've heard that the battle axe of hatred looks especially beautiful in the moonlight. So we were wondering if we could get a look at that bad boy in the pale light of the moon. And since all your guys seem pretty crazy, like, I don't know if they're going to trust us because they're not as cool as you, Harrelson. Maybe oh, wow. we were thinking, you know, you could go in and get the axe from out of that big fort so we could look at it and skip Anthony's dungeon. <laughs> all right, go ahead and roll <laughs> persuasion, you piece of shit. <laughs> ah, oh, I got a I have advantage from all my horrible jokes because I'm a horrible person. So I'm going to roll that again. Inspired moment from our boy, Henry. Uh, I got a... Um, a 12. <laughs> yeah, let's see. He goes, uh, no, nah, I don't, I don't think I want to, uh, it feels like they, they said it should just stay in that room. I like, I, I, I feel like I, I'm being a cool dude by like even letting you guys come in to see mm, it. So fair. like, don't yeah, make me feel like fair. a dick. W what if, what if we said, please? Ooh, yeah, no difference. No difference okay. for I me. I put my arm around right? Harrelson. I go, uh, hey, you, you like, uh, you like everybody in that? Are those, are they your friends in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The red brands. I mean, we're 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 pretty tight. We're, <laughs> and he puts a he puts a hand to his chest. He goes, "We're old money." So. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So if you care about all those people in there, you can either go get the axe, or we're gonna go and get the axe. And if we go get the axe, all your friends are gonna look like. And then I turn him to look at all of the bodies of his friends, and I kind of put my foot in some of the viscera on the floor. Oh my god! And like that, like that. So those are your and, two options. And Ron says, "Looks like that old money is broke." <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, Ron! Thanks, Daryl. That's that's just like good. That's not even a dad joke. That's just like yeah. a good one-liner. That's like a David yeah, that's Caruso. Tough. Yeah, that's yeah. A da oh, that's, that's like a you Caruso that yeah. Ron reaches for his sunglasses and realizes he never had them. <laughs> <laughs> so Daryl, roll intimidation with advantage. Eighteen plus one, nineteen. So he goes like, "Ho, oh, oh, so you ha so your friends are mean. So you so you got some so you got some gangster friends, huh? Huh, my man, Glenn." Yeah, you know, oh. after college or whatever school we attended, things got a little rough for me, I guess. <laughs> Glenn's Jesus. not very good at, uh, at, at making people feel like, but once he's in with you, he's cool. Hey, Harrelson. Yeah. Is there like a rank system? Like how are you? Are you up on the ladder here? How are you? How are you in terms of uh, the ladder? Of, I'm like, uh, I'm like middle management. Uh, Harrison, are there any like upper, upper management uh, positions available? <laughs> you, I have my resume. I mean, one of the guys you just killed was like slightly above me, so I guess. Oh, okay. I guess I have his job now, so maybe not. But who has your job? Is there a you HR? Can take my job. <laughs> uh, we, there is a guy who works for us that named, named HR. Correct? Yes. It's me, Harrelson it's, Ron. It's me. Yeah, it's me, Harrelson Ron. That's my name. Oh, my first name is Ron. <laughs> this is such a coincidence. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Daryl Wilson's just like rubbing his head, like I don't get. We just He's like, oh, sorry, yeah, I'm scared. What do you want? What What do I have to do to not die? Oh, we wouldn't kill you. Your last names are wrong. <laughs> I mean, I, I can I can speak for these. All right, Dad Huddle. Well, guys, I just mean I need to make sure if we're gonna kill him or not because if we're gonna kill him, um, I should probably take his last name as his murderer, and then I'll be Ron Ron. <laughs> Well, Ron, Ron, I, I believe what I was trying to do was that we just send him in to get the axe. And I think he'll do it now because if we if he doesn't, we said we'd kill all of his friends. Or if I take the position of his uh, his former manager, I can fire him if he doesn't get the axe. It's good, I like it. It's a two pronged approach. Yeah. Daryl looks over to Henry and Glenn and kind of like raises his hands like, are you guys going to. Could you go get that axe for us, maybe? Sure. And sure. if you and if you don't get it. 
you'll also be fired by your new manager, Ron. I was already so intimidated and now I'm worried about my job security. I know. You've saying- changed since college. I- <laughs> Ron reaches out a hand and puts it on his shoulder in a slightly menacing way. And he says, I'm not sure you should be intimidated. I'm just saying your job might not be here if you don't come back with the axe. Oh my God. It's the cruelest thing. Also, our Christmas party is canceled. <laughs> Oh, no, I was looking forward to that. Does Harrelson walk away? Yes, Harrelson Ron walks away and goes like, okay, here we go. As he walks away, uh, Daryl looks at uh, Ron and Glenn and be like, good job, guys. That was a team effort. Yeah, Hands in the middle. Honestly, um, I think we should have the Christmas party regardless of whether he comes back out. That's a great idea. All right, I put my hand in the middle. All right. How bloody is everyone's hands in the middle? I mean- Henry's are insanely bloody because it was his claws. I'm just, I'm elbow deep in gore and viscera. <laughs> so I slap my hand on last with like a big wet, like thump sound. And then I say, I'm, this is gross. I, I need to clean up after this, guys. <laughs> you know, this started off pretty rough, but I mean, I called the presidents. You, you charmed a guy. You became a bear and, and Ron, you threw that skip at hella good. I became the boss. Yeah. <laughs> I say one, two, three doodlers. One, one two, two, three doodlers. doodlers. Guys, the, the, there's smoke coming out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Should I do? I do you still want me to go? Because it's there's smoke. <laughs> Just to hold your breath, there, Harry. You should, I mean, how bad? Really? Oh, hold on. Let me try this. Let me try this. And I get a pen and I write on his hand. Bring the axe out. Okay. All I right. Put, I take the pen and I said. Or you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Do you write it on the same hand, or does he just have one hand that just says "or you're fired" if he looks at them in the same wrong hand, order? Same hand. Same hand. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Ron takes the other hand and then ducks him in the pen fifteen club. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. that. Smoke is totally fine and totally cush. Okay. Okay. Here I go. <gasps> and he runs in and he's gonna do a Constitution check. He disappears into the smoke and you hear. <laughs> that, I'm sure that sounds great on the podcast. You hear, you hear the sound of his feet receding into the distance, and then for the return, you, see, you hear a dice roll. Yeah, you hear a dice roll, and then on the return trip, you hear, "Oh no!" <laughs> 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 you hear vomit. He goes, whoa, 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 and puts his hands up to like cover the vomit, and then he like sees for a split second before he vomits on his hands. You're fired, or you're fired. Good to bring out the axe. Okay, so let's do a wisdom saving throw for that. All right, so he comes out going like <laughs> holding something wrapped in a, in a bundle of fabric, going like, bah, bah, with a vomit just running down his, his chin, just hoping that this will like. He actually, sorry, he doesn't. He doesn't walk out. He like floats well, the momentum, out. Like, the momentum like, pulls him over. He's just like swimming in the air, or like, like Willy Wonka like, style. Yeah, like Willy Wonka, like he just fucking took fizzy lifting drink and. Um, <laughs> Good pull on the name of the drink, yeah, by yeah. the way. <laughs> well, now the ceiling needs to be washed. Uh, <laughs> uh, and he fucking comes out looking just very confused and very sad. He just tears. He's did, 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 like the painful vomit where just tears are coming out of his fucking eyes and some of the vomit's coming out of his nose because those are connected tubes. Oh, and um, he comes out just holding this, this bundle and he goes, and just drops it on the ground. He goes, oh, help. <laughs> I need help. Help. I need help. 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 I pat him on the back encouragingly and like I say, Thanks so much, Harrelson. You have a good night. And I just sort of gently push him back in the room and close the door. <laughs> oh, no. oh, my God. As, as this happens, Ron calls out, you did good. This will come up at your next performance review. We don't really have the funds for raises right now, but check in next year. <laughs> I was going to give him some water. But I was going to, yeah. I have a spell called Goodberry where you can give him a berry and it heals him a little bit. I guess we just threw him in the, in the bar. Daryl's perplexed. He just watches him drift away like, I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just hear five men in there just vomiting over and over again and in like in fucking surround sound because they're also like pinballing off the walls like a, <laughs> like like the DVD symbol in the menu. <laughs> We gotta wait to wait. We gotta wait for one of them to hit the corner, guys. <laughs> and, I, and I sort of dust my hands. And I'm like, "Hey, guys, looks like we got ourselves an axe." Okay, so you hear uh, behind you, you hear uh, small feet sort of running up, and then as you turn around, you see like, "Oh, it's Nick. Cool." And he looks at the bundle on the ground. He goes, "Oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. Let's get in. Go. Let's get in. Go." Uh, point of order: Should we check the bundle to make sure it's actually the axe? Yeah, let's take a quick. Let's look. take. A, I want to see this axe in the moonlight. Someone told me it looks great in the moonlight. Okay, hold on, Nick. Let me just make sure. I'm going to unwrap it so we can see okay. it and make sure it is the axe. So, Freddie Wong, not Glenn Close. Okay. Describe to me. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> that has been YouTuber. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Former professional guitar hero player Freddie Wong. What is your ideal? guitar oh okay um 
Okay. Ooh, all right. So in terms of ideal guitars, what we're going to be looking at here is probably... I'm already bored. I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> you unveil, you open up the fabric and you see... PR, the- a PRS styling pre-1994 because 1994 they switched to CNC machines and their quality took a significant drop. So early 90s, PRS, uh, probably uh, single coil. Yeah. Uh, and they'll probably do the pearlescent inlays on top of that with the uh, the bird frets. I can see that uh, Will over there is Googling it to get a sense of what it is. They do a great quilted maple finish on those. It just looks rad. And then you got the sort of inlay, the mother of pearl inlays on top of that. I Googled this and I just see a bunch of fucking guitars. <laughs> <laughs> so you realize as you open the fabric that this is not just the battle axe of hatred. This is the battle axe <laughs> <laughs> of hatred. <laughs> This is the guitar of, I mean, the brand name on it is is a little bit different and, you know, the shape of it is slightly not quite what you're used to on earth, but this is clearly a demonically cool guitar. And as your hand reaches out for it, you can feel an energy within it that is calling to you. Ooh, I mean, I feel like I'm definitely picking this thing up. Okay, so you now have, as an inventory item, as a potential weapon, the battle axe of hatred. So the way that this will work as a, as a weapon mm-hmm. is that you need a full action to hype it up, to like get it going. To get like, it tuned up. To, to get, get it tuned, tuned up. up. Yeah, get it. you spend an action to tune it up. Once you do that, it's like a melee weapon that gives you plus three to hit. And if you ever connect, you get to do an additional 2d6 damage. Whoa. But then after that, you need to roll to see if it breaks like Jimi Hendrix, like smashing a guitar on oh, the stage. Like, it, like the power of it takes it so far that I smash it. Yeah. after You're going to have to roll after every attack with oh. it to see if it breaks or not. Interesting. That's a good mechanic. Yeah. So, so you, come, you come with that? Yeah. That's a good mechanic. Wow. Yeah. So uh, that's something you have now. Uh, guys, I think this is it. Hey, what, what is it? What you got there? Is that, that's no axe. What is that? Bass? A guitar? It's a rock and six string. It's like, I think this is what Bon Jovi was talking about in uh, Wanted Dead or Alive. That's the six string from the song. My God, it's the one. This is it. <laughs> does it sound like an electric guitar? Like, does it like somehow emanate strong, harsh, overdriven riffs from it, despite the fact that it is an inanimate object? Yes, it nice. feels like an electric guitar, but it feels like it is powered by the screaming of an ancient and evil lord. <laughs> It feels like every single note that comes out of it is just a different pitch of pain and agony and suffering that the thing within this guitar has caused at some point in its millennia-long lifespan. So it sounds oh, like man. David Lee Roth. That's what <laughs> if David Lee Roth was a guitar, <laughs> this is that guitar. <laughs> oh, yeah! Yep. So it sounds real, sounds real good. Uh, is it, does it just look like an electric guitar, like from our world? It looks like it visually, but when you lock eyes with it, you feel down in your heart and down in the lizard part of your brain, both simultaneously, they're next to each other, um, <laughs> that there is something evil about this thing in like a cool ass way, like in a, like a dope metal way. But there is definitely something inside of this thing that wants to get out. Uh, Henry Oak is going to make a wisdom insight check. Okay. He's getting bad vibes off this guitar. Let's do, let's do Arcana check. Arcana? Yeah. Okay. That's for like magic shit. Ah, shit. I don't have a bonus in that, but let's do it anyway. Your geology will not help you here. I got a nine. <laughs> so, uh, you, you definitely feel that something inside is alive. It is evil. You do not know what its motives are. Guys, I think that thing Anthony just said, there's something alive in that guitar. And that's why I can't stop Glenn, noodling I, on these scales. <laughs> no, Glenn, I, I feel like as seductive and alluring as this guitar is, we should treat it carefully and we should maybe not try to swing it around all the time. Like, this is this is bad juju coming off of this thing. Like, you know, I'm no enemy to the, the, the classic rock sounds. You know, I've got an acoustic back home. Uh, but I just, I feel like maybe we should be careful here. That's all I'm saying. Can you play Wonderwall? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. It sounds like this. That's the most rock and roll rendition of Man. Wonderwall you've ever heard. It turns it from a great song into an even better <laughs> one. That's right. A banger to the bangest. That's right. <laughs> Guys, let's go. We got it. Let's get in the, let's get in the van. Let's get oh, out of here, yeah. man. Okay, cool. So you all get back in the van. 
Lizard Boy scales McStuffins is like, we did, we did good. We did, you, you nailed it. Oh Lizard yeah, Lizzie Boy. Boy, you got it, man. Do you mind passing waters out to everybody? Yeah, absolutely. Waters for everybody. Thanks, man. All right. Um, so as you drive back, oh, hold on. I feel like I got I got whisper something sweet nothing to the car. It's been about an hour. Oh, sure, sure, sure. So yeah, the car doesn't doesn't uh, start. Yeah, hold it's on one second, of- guys. I climb out to the back and I go, <clears throat> Odyssey San, Ganbate, which is do your best, Odyssey San. <laughs> Okay, so on the way back to the camp of the water mice, uh, I'm going to assume that that Nick and uh, Glenn are in the back seat, sort of just hanging out, looking at the at the guitar and admiring it and stuff like that. Noodling on it. Yeah, noodling on it. Nick says, so that no one other than you can hear. Mm-hmm. So I'd like every other player to take off your headphones and put your fingers in your ears. Oh, shit. Ooh, Ooh. Ooh this is drama. Hey, Dad. Yeah. Uh, you, you know that curse that the, the wizard put on me? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I made it up. What? Yeah, I kind of just wanted to keep hanging out with you and with these the water mice. So I kind of made it up because your friends seemed like shitty. But I think, I think we should like ditch them and just sort of hang out together, dude. Yeah. Let me be the first to tell you, that sounds like an awesome idea. Oh, I'm so glad you think so. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? Mm, I think we gotta find an opportunity to sort of ditch them and get the van, and then. We could uh, we could take some of the drugs, some of the some of the flowers, and then take them to like water deep and sell them, and then just sort of hit the road together, a father and son band. We could road trip and like fund the road trip with these illicit substances out of the back of our van. This sounds exactly like something I did back in the eighties. It's it's exactly what you told me you did, and I I, I feel like I can finally live your childhood with you. <laughs> okay, man, this sounds good. Okay, okay, let's do it. Okay, great. <laughs> What were we doing while all that whispering was going on? I don't know. What were you doing? What are you doing on the way back? I was, I was telling CERN how it all went. <laughs> okay. Oh, let's see. Wait, what would, what, how did it go? Oh, CERN was pretty wild. Uh, uh, Henry there turned into a bear. I called I called all the founding fathers, and, man, I just wailed on them all. I, I <laughs> ran in front of the dad, the president, and then the other president, and my favorite uh, TV dad. I, I crushed it. Ron crushed it. We all crushed it. We, were, all, we all totally made our dads proud. But you especially, you were really heroic. You did a lot of cool uh, stuff. I did, you know, I did my best, which I think everybody appreciated. CERN, I got to be honest, I didn't make my dad proud. Sorry oh, I'm sorry. That. Sorry about that, Ron. That's okay, Ron. Do you like your dad? I love, I love my dad, but I didn't say I, love. The way what I always told my kids before pyramid squished them. <laughs> what did you tell them, sir? I told them that like I want you to love me, but I want you to like me too, because love can be a complicated thing. Liking somebody is pretty straightforward. Everybody wants to be liked. Well, listen, I like you, sir. I like and you I too. Well, wait, no, I don't. You were dick to me like yesterday. <laughs> CERN. CERN. I've always been on, I've always been very pro CERN. All right. You had, ne- you had a hard never, day. Always pro, never con CERN. Uh, to be fair, uh, that's not, no, no, I'm, uh, I'm being genuine here. No, but just earlier today, you told CERN that you didn't care about anything he was saying to you, um, including my dead kids. Yeah. Here's the thing. I don't like my dad, but I don't want to talk about that either. So let's that's just, fine. okay, cool, cool, cool. I respect cool. your boundaries. Piece of shit. <laughs> I, I do want to say Henry Oak is using all the wet wipes to wipe all the entrails off of his arms. I'm assuming that. Oh, uh, I appreciate that there, uh, Henry. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying not to touch anything. It's not going well. There's just like a lot of tiny, bloody wet wipes on the ground. Perfect. So you come back to um, the lair of the water mice and uh, uh, Ellery comes out and goes like, hey, you guys, how'd the, how'd the quest go? Everything go cool? And uh, Nick's like, yeah, awesome. We got the axe. It's fucking awesome. Look at us. He doesn't actually do that. He just like is doing air guitar because he doesn't want to touch it because he feels like it's yours now and he's really proud that you have it. And she goes, how did it go with the red brands? Did you like get in and out like quietly? And he goes like, ah, no, no. And as he says that, you hear hoofbeats in the distance. First a couple and then many, many, many more. Soon, the camp of the water mice is surrounded by dozens and dozens of red brands on horseback holding flaming torches. And from all of them, a single rider breaks up from the pack with a bundle on his back. He has a hood on and he, and he sort of unfurls it back. And this long, beautiful blonde hair sort of spills down from his head across his shoulders. And he says, what did you do? You took the battle axe of hatred. You know what this means, don't you? It's time for us to go to battle with the water mice. What say you to this? 
And Ellery goes like, oh, uh, I mean, that's it was kind of their thing. And she points at you guys <laughs> and she goes, so you're you're sort of going to battle with them, not the water mice. It was like it was that was a thing that, that he wanted to do. Well, uh, Henry oh, Oak oh, here. Oh, uh, uh, we yep. were doing it for them, though. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They asked us. We to were do on it. just their orders. We were, we're just the middleman here. Yeah, she, she's being a very modest mouse. She, she, she was. Oh, like, oh, 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 you beat me to it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it was her idea, though, the, the, the whole time. I really give all the credit in the world to her. So let's just all float on, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you did. And you did during the fight. Oh, my God. Wow. So, so this blonde warrior goes like, it doesn't matter which one of you started it. But for the record, they started it. I feel like it's you guys are the ones with blood on. Like, are you literally holding a bunch of bloody wet wipes? I feel like it was probably you. I, I, uh, Kool-Aid. This Kool- it was Kool-Aid. Do you have Kool-Aid? <laughs> No, what is Kool-Aid? It's, it's blood. A, it's I mean, a, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's blood. All right, so we're just admitting that it was, we're just fully accepting I, it was you in the weird behemoth, the metal behemoth that did all the killing. And oh, stole. yeah. <laughs> and you're holding the axe. Uh, so he goes, okay, that means it's time for a proper battle. If I was being pathetic, if I was being like Ellery here, just stealing things in the night, I might say we should just take your head for this. But I've got some good news for people who like bad news. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's time for a proper battle, and not some cowardly battle made with swords and bows and arrows. This will be a battle, and he grabs the bundle on, on his back, and shing, and like the cloth comes off of it, and you see that it's a guitar, almost like the sister to the guitar that you have in your hands, <laughs> but with lightning shooting out of the fresh, and he goes, it will be a battle of the bands. <laughs> oh, 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 man. Dungeons and Daddies is Matt Arnold as Daryl Wilson, Anthony Birch as our DM, Will Campos as Henry Oak, Beth May as Ron Stampler, and myself, Freddie Wong, as Glenn Close. Theme song by Maxton Waller. This week, as you've heard, we've launched our Patreon. If you've enjoyed our show and want to support this 100% serious podcast about parenting, now you can. We've got a bunch of different tiers for you dad joke aficionados out there, and there's a whole slew of cool perks from being able to submit items and character names to extra podcasts, videos, and one-shots, and even uncut versions of the episodes and DM notes. I could list everything out here and bore you to death, or you could see it with your own two eyes at patreon.com slash dungeonsanddads. And again, folks, regardless of whether or not you become a Patreon supporter, thank you so much for listening and writing reviews on iTunes and telling your friends about this show. We see it out there. And we appreciate it immensely. We're on Twitter at Dungeons and Dads, and we got Facebook band club going at bit.ly slash Dungeon Dads. But for those of you free from Zuckerberg's yoke, find our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash Dungeons and Daddies. Back at you May 21st, but every dad knows that May 12th is the more important date. That's Mother's Day. That's this Sunday. Don't forget. We'll see you later. There was a time when you could read between the lines, you know they never brought you down, never brought you down. Oh, I was saying I've deduced that their armor class is 13. It's 14. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> As I said last episode, maybe the worst detective ever. <laughs>